Hello and welcome to part 3 of our lecture series about hierarchical multiple regression. So in the previous tutorial, we demonstrated how to run hierarchical multiple regression using JASP. And for today, I will teach you on how to convert those results into an APA formatted table. Now, because as much as those results can be copy and pasted from the JASP platform to your word processor such as Microsoft Word, the formatting is really not ideal. So you have to reformat it into something that is acceptable to publications. So that's what we will discuss for today. But before we continue, I'm inviting everyone to please subscribe to the channel. About 90% of the people who are listening to these lectures and watching these tutorials are not yet subscribed. So I'd really appreciate it if you can help me by subscribing. Thank you very much. So as what I've said, you can actually copy results like this. You can click on copy and then you can go to a Word document and paste those results into a Word document such as this. And the tendency of students is to submit the report, no, including these tables. But these tables are really not ideal because they're not formatted in APA. And if you want to format these tables in accordance to APA, it's difficult to format them because as you can see, if we put lines in all of these cells, the cells are really very complicated, right? Now, even if for correlation, the lines are really very complicated. So from these outputs, by the way, so this is the output for the descriptive statistics. Uh, this is the output for the correlation coefficients. And these are the output for the hierarchical linear regression. How do we convert this into an APA formatted tables? So from here, you can see that we have multiple tables. One, two, three, four, five. But in fact, I can simplify all of these things into two tables only. So our goal is to convert these results, having five tables, into something like this. So in this table, we have combined both the descriptives and then the correlation coefficients. And then for the hierarchical regression, all of those models, we've summed it up into this simple table. So two tables only. So some basics about any APA formatted table. So at the very top, the table is labeled using a table number, such as table 1. You will notice that table 1 is in boldface. There is no period after the numeral. And then the table title is in upper and lower cases. And it's not boldface, it's italicized. And it's double-spaced. Okay, so remember those things. For the tables, if I put lines in here so that you can see, you can see that unlike the output from JASP, it's quite simpler. No? So you'd have to create these tables yourself no, by using the insert table function. So all you have to do is kind of determine how many rows and how many columns do I need. And then you can add and subtract columns uh, if necessary. By the way, my Word document is in landscape view specifically for this output because I have many variables as much as possible if you can fit your tables into a portrait then that would be better if not then you have the option to do the landscape orientation but other things to remember so each column should have a heading so I could add here uh, variables so all of the headings are centered not bold Statistical notations that are non-Greek letters should be italicized. Greek letter statistical notations such as beta, not italicized. And then the rest of the cells are centered okay. except for this first column, which is flush uh, left or justified left. But the heading should be centered, okay? And then if you have notes, so specifically here, I needed to make note of 
what the asterisk mean and because I'm using shortened labels here I had to identify what these shortened labels mean so you can add that as a note um, what else there are no vertical lines so the, the table should be open what does that mean so what I do is I remove the borders and then I simply add back the horizontal line that separates the header from the rest of the body of the table. So this is what we refer to as open table. So what did I do? I basically copied the mean and standard deviation values from this table from here and copied it here. And then I copied the correlation coefficients from here to here. And then I manually added the asterisks. Another thing that you should remember is that the values must be uniform. So according to APA, it's either three or two decimal places, but whatever it is, be consistent. So I have decided that all of the values be two decimal places. So I've rounded these values from these values. Another thing to remember is that you'll notice that some values have what we refer to as a lead zero, while others do not have a lead zero. So some specific values should have a lead zero. What is a lead zero? This is an example of a lead zero, while others do not have. Unfortunately, JASP does not recognize that yet. <laughs> For correlation coefficients, you should manually remove the lead zeros. Uh, but which values should have a lead zero? If a value can exceed one, because these are the scores, I'm assuming that they can exceed one. Uh, in fact, the standard deviation is greater than one, so there's a strong assumption that they can exceed one, then they should have a lead zero. But values that do not exceed one, correlation coefficients can never exceed one. The maximum correlation coefficient is positive one and negative one. There's no correlation coefficient beyond one. So for values like that, such as p-values, correlation coefficients, regression coefficients, particularly standardized regression coefficients, they do not exceed one. Therefore, you should remove the lead zero. And also to simplify, you will notice that my headers, instead of, oh, let me change this. So I removed some variables from the original table. So this should be two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then this should be, so one referring to math proficiency. So this should be two, three, four, five, six, seven. So for example, three, so three is school safety risk, this one. So the relationship between belongingness and school safety risk is there, negative 0.17. So instead of putting you know, PV1 math or bullied or school safety risk, uh, which would consume a lot of space, then just put the numerals. And that's why it's important that your variables are numbered here. Okay, all right. Uh, what else? So there, so I basically combined the two tables, descriptives and the correlation coefficients into one. This is an unnecessary row that's basically removed. Next one is the table for the hierarchical multiple regression. Again, same format, table two, bold face, uh, the table title, upper, lower cases, italicized, then double spaces. By the way, what font should you use? I think APA suggests uh, a variety of font types, Times New Roman, Arial, Calibri. Font size, for as long as it's readable, depending on the kind of information. For this, I think in the font size is 11. So for as long as it fits the page well, then there's really no problem about it. But don't use a font size that's too small, of course. So what I did here, if we go to the original output, what we actually need here is basically the individual contributions. So among the many possible values that I can include. I limited it because we have limited space. I limited it to the standardized regression coefficient, standard error, and then the beta or the standardized regression coefficient. So you have it here, the unstandardized regression coefficient, 
which is annotated as B, S, E for standard error, and then for the standard segregation coefficient, this one. So the notation is beta. So again, italicized for non-Greek letter statistical notations. Do not italicize Greek letter statistical notations. Same thing, I limited it to two decimal places. Some have lead zero, uh, but the standard desegregation coefficients do not have lead zero because they do not exceed one. And then I did this for the three models. So we have your model one, model two, and model three. So for model one, this only includes information about you know, sex and socioeconomic status. For model two, sex, socioeconomic status, bullying, school safety risk. And for model three, sex, socioeconomic status, bullying, school safety risk, belongingness, and teacher. If you want to see how this looks like with the borders, there you go. So that you can visualize what you need to do. So some cells are merged, as you can see. And then instead of reporting the T values and the P values, I simply put an asterisk on the significant regression coefficients. And similarly, I put a note here below so that the reader knows what the asterisks mean. So only three information instead of one, two, three, four, five. And then for the model summaries, I simply reported the variance r squared where do we get that here so you will notice so this is 0 0.07 which is rounded up and then 0.23 which is this value and 0.28 which is from here and then the change in r where did we get that so from here change in r obviously this is the first model so the r squared and the change in r are the same okay so this one change in r that's that so forth and so on and then if these are significant so the corresponding f ratio for the change in r so these values are from here and then whether they're significant or not is identified again by the asterisk okay and then similarly because i use shortened labels i also identified what these are for sex, which is a dichotomous variable, I also identified how I coded it. No? Male 1, female 0. And then, so if we make this an open table like that. There. And there okay so that's it so we practically didn't have to use you know, any of these information so that's how you prepare a simplified APA formatted table uh, for hierarchical multiple regression again the headings must be centered uh, not bold face some of them are italicized particularly statistical notations that are non-Greek. The values are all centered, but the information on the first column is justified left. You will notice that there is no standardized um, uh, coefficient for the intercept because there really is no standard segregation coefficient for the intercept. So the intercept is basically the value of the outcome variable, in this case, mathematics proficiency, assuming that all of these variables are zero. So that's it. No? So hopefully you learned something. If you have questions or clarifications, you can reach out to me via the comment section. I hope that you learned something. And again, I want to invite everyone to please subscribe to my channel. For the next video, I will talk about how to write a report about this particular set of results. And the report is actually here. So we will discuss about this. All right, see you.